Welcome to Small Arms Solutions. Today we're looking at the Palmetto State Armory KS-47 rifle, Gen 2. Now, we previously did a, did a review on the standard you know, AR-15 type uh, Palmetto State Armory rifle, which we had very, very good experience with. I've had a lot of interest in this rifle due to the fact that I do like the 7.62 by 39 millimeter cartridge. However, when you try to put it in an AR-15 type lower receiver, you tend to have a lot of issues with malfunctioning because of the way the cartridge stack sits. Now, the reason why you have a magazine that's a, quote, banana shape like this is not to make it look nasty. The reason this is because if you look at the natural stack of the 762 by 39 millimeter cartridge cases, if you were to put 15 of them on the, the mat, you'd be able to see that they sit naturally in this, in this condition. When you have an AR-15 type magazine where you have that straight top of the magazine well, the rounds do not sit properly. and Most of the time they're sitting down too low, causing failures to feed. So obviously the only way you're going to be able to make an AR type rifle that fires reliably is to take a natural magazine that it's made for, which is the uh, 7.62 by 39 millimeter AK magazine, which is what this has done. Now, there's been a few companies that have done this before. The first time I think I've ever seen this was with the Knights Armament SR, or SR-47, which was done for a SOCOM contract, uh, which was not very successful, unfortunately. It, was, it was ended up being dropped. But that was the first time that I had seen uh, an AR that was converted. Now, the original artillery written in AR-10s made in uh, Holland, they had had AR-10s that were chambered uh, for the AK magazine. But for as far as an AR-15 type, uh, the first one I had seen was the SR-47. Now, there are some other companies that do this, and we're going to be looking at these in the near future as well. This has also been done by CMMG in their Mark 47. It's been done by uh, Rock River Arms in their LAR-47. It's been done by the uh, Wyndham Weaponry MCS or the MCI Hydra in their uh, MCS or Hydra platforms. Now, some other things that we're going to be looking at is you're going to see a, a video coming up in the future that's going to do a comparison between all four of these rifles. I mean, the Palmetto State Armory, KS-47, the CMG uh, MK-47, the LAR-47 by Rock River Arms, and the Wyndham Weaponry WMCS. And what that video is going to show you is all the different rifles. It's going to also going to do a compatibility with magazines, which... It's very interesting to find out that uh, these magazine wells on these rifles, they're not all the same. The AK-47 magazines cause a lot of issues because there is no standard magazine. You'll see there's a lot of variances in, in the way these magazines uh, are manufactured, which cause problems with them uh, fitting in the rifles. There was originally a Gen 1, and the one we have here is a Gen 2. There's been several manufacturing changes that have been done to it. What we're going to do is we're going to go from back to front, and we're also going to talk about, as we go through that, what changes have been done from the Gen 1 to the Gen 2. We have a standard Magpul Mo stock, a standard receiver extension, receiver extension uh, castle nut, standard end plate, and on the lower receiver we have a 7075T6 aircraft forging. We have an H buffer. The H buffer was one of the changes that was done on the Gen 2. And with this increased reliability, less than recoil, and increased reliability by giving more time for the magazine uh, follower and spring to lift the cartridge up to get it in line properly with the barrel extension. As you can see, we have a Magpul Mo pistol grip on here. This is actually my favorite pistol grip. I have the Magpul Myads on everything. It just gives a much better feeling. We have a standard trigger on here. We have the PSA enhanced polished trigger on here. This trigger broke at eight and a quarter pounds. A standard mil spec type trigger, nothing special. Um, this is something that you do want to be a little bit careful with when you change out uh, springs and whatnot because of the fact that this is striking a very heavy uh, Russian primer uh, with most of the wolf ammunition that's out there. So you have to be very, very careful uh, which springs that you use because you have to have enough pressure to set that, set that primer off because it's that much harder. We have the magazine release in the front, which is a paddle. It can, it's ambidextrous. can be from either the right or left-hand side or the bottom. So just by pushing forward, the magazine pops right out. Now, as you can see, we don't have a bolt catch on here, and there's a reason for that. If you look at the back of the AK magazine, you have no provision for a tab on the rear to flip upward on the bolt catch uh, to engage it. So that's the reason why you don't see on any of these rifles any kind of a, a bolt catch on the 760x39 AK type magazine. Now, you have captive front and rear uh, pivot pin and takedown pins. You can see we have a nice little uh, hole in the, in the center there where we can use a bullet tip to push these in and out. Now, for as far as the trigger, there's one thing we do want to bring out. Um, the Palmetto State Armory has uh, brought this out as well. This will take any mil-spec standard trigger except for the ones that have the single-piece drop-in because you have the spring from the bulk, from the magazine release here that will get in the way so it will not seat. So you can use any trigger in here but the ones that have the drop-in because of that spring. Okay, for as far as the upper receiver is concerned, we start off with an A2 compensator. 
Um, this is also nice because this can be removed and you can put a suppressor on here. And this being a good military grade barrel, a good US made barrel, you don't have the issues with the concentricity barrels you do with AK, so that's not an issue. 4150 steel barrel, uh, nitride finished, 1 and 10 inch twist, 6 right. It's a mid weight barrel, it's not light, it's not thin, it's about what you would want. Uh, 4762 by 39 it gives it a good balance. We have a carbine length gas system on here. Now taking a look at the feed ramp, you're going to see another area where the Gen 2 uh, made an improvement. On the receiver extension, instead of having the standard lugs that go all the way around, there's only one lug where the feed ramp is. And that makes it much easier and much uh, more reliable for as far as feeding. It doesn't have anything it can catch on. Upper receiver, this is proprietary to the KS-47 775T6 aircraft grade aluminum. You do see we have a standard charging handle, we have a standard forward assist, uh, we do have a fire cartridge case deflector, and we also have ejection port dust cover. Now looking on the inside, which we're going to see another one of the changes that goes to the Gen 2. Yeah. Looking right here, you can see you have magazine stop tabs in here. This prevents over-insertion of the magazine, and also making sure the magazine is straight. One of the issues you have with uh, these rifles that utilize AK magazines and ARs is the magazine does not sit properly. And what happens a lot of times is the back end of it sits down too low, so the the locking lugs, when they go to feed, they either miss the cartridge, or if it's sitting up too high, it'll grab two. So this ensures that the magazine is properly inserted at all times. Now looking at the bolt carrier, we have a standard M16 type bolt carrier. We do have a modified bolt to take 762 by 39 as you can see how it's machined out to have the larger um, cartridge base. Now we do have a special firing pin in here as well. well for the, far, the firing pin for the 762 by 39 you have a different shape to the head and it also will go in further than a standard 556. This is due to the ammunition. A majority of the 762 by 39 ammunition that's going to be used is going to be of the Wolf or of the Russian origin. Those primers are significantly harder than that of what we use here in the United States. So in order to ensure that they will go off, that it will set those primers off, you have to have a longer and a uh, more blunt uh, firing pin to, to hit that properly so it will set the round off. You do have nit nitride coated. You have a bolt made from 9310 steel instead of the standard Carpenter 158, so you do have a stronger bolt. Now the geometry on this bolt is something else that has been done uh, very, very differently from the standard rifles. The way the geometry is on these bolts is designed specifically so it will not scrape on the top of the magazines. If you look at the LAR-47, for instance, that's one rifle I, ha I, had to, I have a shot that will not take a Magpul P-Mag because those locking lugs scrape on the top of the magazine. This will not happen with this rifle due to the fact that uh, they have reduced the dimensions on those areas so it will not scrape at the top of the magazine. You also do have reduction in weight of the bolt carrier as well. So we're going back into the receiver reassembly. One of the first tests that I decided I want to do uh, with this is I want to see what kind of magazine compatibility that it had. Now, as I previously stated, that one of the issues that AKs have is the fact that there are magazines that are made all over the world. And there's not necessarily one drawing that these are all made to. So having ones that have the proper, you know, the proper location for the front hook, a proper location in the rear for the for the mag release. And also for as far as the width of the magazine is concerned, you see a lot of issues, especially with all these AR type rifles. So what we did was we tested with over 40 different magazines to check for compatibility. The magazines that we had found that fit perfectly, we had Soviet steel, Soviet Blakelite, East German steel, Croatian steel, Magpul polymer, Bulgarian polymer, Chinese steel, Chinese Bakelite, Polish polymer, the Ultimag polymer, and CAA polymer. Now the only magazines I had that did not fit in this rifle were the Tapco, Promag, and US Palm. So of all 40 magazines, I had only had three that didn't, did not fit function in this rifle. And uh, that's pretty impressive compared to the other rifles, which we're going to be seeing in a comparison between the four rifles that we have to take these magazines of what the uh, magazines they would take and feed reliably. So this was very, very impressive. Pretty much everything that I had, this thing had no problems with whatsoever. So going over uh, the differences between the Gen 1 and Gen 2, you have the H buffer. You have the modifications to the, to the bolt locking lugs. You have the barrel extension with the one feed ramp instead of two. Mag stop on the upper receiver to, to increase reliability and feeding by holding the magazine in a proper position. You also have a new gas port size. Now the gas port size is a little complex with the because you have such a wide variety of ammunition. If you look at a lot of the ammunition that's out there, the Soviet type and the Chinese type, 
it's very inconsistent for as far as poor pressures or chamber pressures. It sounds like Chinese fireworks when the ammunition goes off. You know, boom, 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 boom. And you have a big difference in, in the different uh, loads that are done. So to have this rifle compatible with all this ammunition, they had to open up the gas port a little bit. The rifle was still not over gassed. When you see this thing fire, you'll see the cartridge cases do go consistently to the rear. They don't bounce forward very much. Um, it's not an over gassed rifle. <clears throat> now, for as far as ammunition compatibility, we tried a few different loads with this. We tried the Gecko 760x39. We tried the Hornady SST. We tried uh, Tula ammunition and Remington ammunition. Now, looking at velocities, the Gecko 760x39, 124 grain full metal jacket. 2,304 feet per second. Hornady, 123 grain SST, 2,280 feet per second. Remington, 760 by 39, 124 grain jacketed soft point, 2,273 feet per second. And a Tula ammunition, 122 grain full metal jacket, 2,421 feet per second. By far, the Tula was the hottest ammunition that was out there. Um, and probably the lowest we had was the was the Remington 762, uh, 124 grain jacketed soft point. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this thing to the range. We're going to see how it shoots. Now, judging from the target, the best group that we got at 100 yards was 1.29 inches with the Gecko ammunition, which is very, very impressive. Uh, you know, your average AR-15 with a decent barrel, you'll be sub-MOA. And this was not quite sub-MOA, but for this caliber, this was very, very impressive. Looking at the MSRP on this thing, you're looking at uh, 599 MSRP. A lot of people like to dog a lot of these lower-cost rifles. Now, the reality is, is Palmetto State Armory manufactures most of their parts in-house which is what leads to a much higher quality than most of the manufacturers you see out there. Now, when I looked at these rifles, this is the first time I've had this one in one of the 5.56 rifles. The quality has been excellent. I, I, I can't fault anything on it. Fit and finish. There's no machining marks. The parts are all tight. I've had nothing come loose. Now, this particular rifle, uh, because it being a 7.62 by 39 and taking the AK magazine, I do a lot more test firing than I normally do. This rifle has had over 3,000 rounds out of it. Uh, the various types of ammunition, and I'm very happy to say I have not had a single malfunction. Uh, other than the magazines, which I knew weren't going to work because they didn't fit in it to begin with, uh, we had, had no problems whatsoever. A vast majority of the ammunition that I shot was the Gecko, uh, and the Gecko being one of the lighter loads. Uh, the accuracy and reliability was superb. The rifle is offered in several different configurations. Uh, this is the PSA Gen 2 KS-47. Uh, this is a 16-inch barrel, A2 pistol grip. 6.45 pounds, uh, overall length of 32 to 35.25 inches, M4 handguards. Then we have the PSA Gen 2 KS-47 Classic Shockwave Pistol, 10.5 inches with a heavy barrel, pin front sight base, A2 comp uh, with M4 handguards, and the KAK Industry Shockwave Receiver Extension. Uh, H buffer weighs 5.85 pounds, overall length of 24.38. We also have the Gen 2 KS-47 Lightweight m lock bow EPT pistol, 10.5-inch heavy barrel, low-profile gas block, A2 compensator, 9-inch lightweight m lock free float barrel, mil-spec receiver extension, SBA3 adjustable pistol brace, H buffer, 5.45 pounds overall length of 2 of 29.25 inches. You know, my overall thoughts of this rifle are pretty damn good. Um, being my first opportunity to look at Palmetto State Armory rifles uh, between this and the AR-15, I have to say I'm very, very impressed for as far as the quality versus the price. It's it's really unbeatable. Now, I hear a lot of people who like to dog on the on the lower lower costs of these guns. Now, the reality is, I'm able to say the Armory manufactures most of their parts in-house. Uh, and what that allows you to do is to have that high quality uh, and the proper parts that fit together. Um, unlike manufacturers who just assemble rifles, these guys actually manufacture them in-house. And I have to say, between the fit and finish, the you know the, the there's no machining marks, uh, everything is tight, everything everything feels good. 
Um, there's nothing I can fault uh, Pabinosa Army for at all. It's very, very high quality. And judging from this rifle's performance, we had nearly 3,000 rounds without a single malfunction with magazines that I knew were good. Uh, the only magazines were the three that I had mentioned that would not fit. Uh, other than that, every magazine, all ammunition, no problem. Accuracy was outstanding uh, for a 7.62x39 caliber rifle to have uh, you know just over an inch. Uh, that was very, very good. I want to thank Henry Champ for doing that group for me uh, out there. And for as far as anybody looking to buy a 7.62x39mm AR, I would always recommend you buy one that takes the AK magazine. Due to the fact the reliability of trying to put a standard AR-15 type straight magazine well and then having that feed up properly, it, it very rarely works. Colts discontinued 7.62x39 several years ago because they couldn't get any magazines that worked. They offered a uh, standard straight magazine that held seven rounds. It was fine, but anytime you would buy somebody else's magazines, the reliability was very, very poor. It caused them to stop manufacturing them. That was not the case with this. Now, when you compare this to the other rifles of its kind, the LAR-47, the Mark 47, uh, the MGI Hydra, and so forth, I have to say, for as far as the overall... Uh, magazine interchangeability, this beat all of them. Uh, you're going to be seeing a video coming out which is going to be a comparison of all four of those rifles. For as far as ammunition compatibility, this one was reliable. And for as far as the accuracy, this actually shot better than the other ones as well, which you're going to see in that video coming up as well. So I would definitely recommend anybody who's looking for a 762 by 39 millimeter version of an AR that takes AK magazines to look at this rifle. Um, they also offer them in pistols, as we mentioned as well. If you pay for this thing, you're getting one hell of a rifle. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share. Thank you.